Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Today is Saturday, May 30th. It's 5.01 p.m. I have two videos I'd like to share with you at the same time. Uh, this first one, um, they're both, in, you could say, political in nature, but have very much to do with us. All right, this, this first one is by Roy Potter. I remember what he used, well, he, his channel still is Roy Paterqua. Uh, it's just R-O-Y-P-O-T-T-E-R-Q-A. So Roy Potter with a Q-A, all small letters spelled out. All right, this one is titled SCOTUS, which is the Supreme Court of the United States, defies slash desecrates First Amendment. All right, apparently, according to the way I'm understanding this, something he said in here is the president is missing. And it seems like I did hear that last night. Or yesterday sometime. Um, but I did a lot of work yesterday. Getting my chair all done. All put back together. Got the room rearranged. Where it's going to sit. And anyway. The point is. I was kind of tired when I was listening to some videos afterward. But I do remember hearing him. I'm pretty sure say. The president is missing, probably in an underground bunker. Now, I found, I thought, missing. Now, that's really strange because normally they would at least make something up and say, the president has taken a few days for R&R and has gone to Camp David. They would just flat out lie. <laughs> they don't mind doing that, do they? But no, he is actually saying that he's missing. He said it again today. Now, this particular video is only 3 minutes, 13 seconds long, and it's talking about how the Supreme Court voted on our First Amendment rights to gather for church. Okay, to gather, period. We have the right to gather. And so, the Supreme Court Justice Roberts, that he figured would be the one that would, like, be on our side and vote um, on our favor so that we could still gather for church or assembly. We have the right to assemble, period. But no, it was voted down. So they are shredding our, our constitutional rights, if y'all didn't know that already. <laughs> so anyway, that's what the first one is about. And... I don't know. I mean, I know he's got some good sources, and I know he means well, but sometimes I think he might tend to be on the really negative side. And, of course, as Christians, we know, and he is a Christian. I, I just think he's Catholic or something, or one of those that will talk about God but doesn't quite believe like we do, which is, you know, I... I can't say which is fine because it's not. People who don't know the gospel truth the way it's supposed to be about repentance and living right and so forth and so on. Well, you know, Jesus told us to live the way he said, obey, if you love me, obey my commandments. I'm sorry for those of you who might be listening to this that don't agree. I feel sorry for you that you don't think you have to obey his commandments, that we're the ones wrong, that we're trampling on the blood because we're, we're not believing that his blood did it all. 
how how bizarre is that for you to think that the Son of God would leave his heavenly estate and come down from heaven, become a human, live a normal life, going through temptations like young men do, and passing every test so that he could be the perfect sacrifice for you. And he went through that horrific pain, torture, and pain, and death. Shed all that blood so that the provision would be there for us to accept it so we could go to heaven. But that doesn't mean it's a one time and it's done thing. It's a lifestyle. You have to show your life has changed. Pick up your cross and follow him. And for anybody to think that's too much. That's too hard. We're only human. We can't be expected to be perfect. Even though he said be perfect even as your heavenly father is perfect. He means to try, and when you mess up, you ask him to forgive you. He taught us how to pray with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed or holy be your name. Let your kingdom come and your will be done on this earth. Or in this earth, it doesn't matter, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. See, then you're asking for prov This is an outline. He didn't mean for us to necessarily say this word for word. It's an outline that you're first worshiping him and praising him. Let your will be done. You're acknowledging that. Nothing is right unless it's His will being done. You're asking for your provisions. It could be bread. It could be, you might need a new car. This is when you would ask for a new car. Or at least a good used one. Or maybe you need a new job. Maybe you need some financial assistance getting your your uh private business back and going now that you've had it shut down for three months or whatever anyway then it moves on into saying forgive us our sins our trespasses that's sinning forgive us lord of our sins and we will forgive those who sin against us he taught that we have to ask for forgiveness and forgive others. And that means actually showing it, not just saying it. Forgive us our sins, and we shall forgive those who sin against us. And then you say, and lead us not into temptation. You ask him to lead you not into temptation. Help lead me the way of righteousness, is what you're saying. Lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. See, I do say it word for word, but I make sure I'm meaning it. And not just speaking out words. When I catch myself saying it word for word, and my brain is thinking about uh, oh needing to finish my chair and how beautiful it's going to look and blah, blah, blah. Or, or the dog, oh, I forgot to wash out the dog's ears and uh, whatever. Do you ever do that when you have something memorized and you're just saying it by rote memory? You're, another part of your brain can think of something else. I can do it all the time. I make myself stop and start all over again, close my eyes, and imagine myself before the throne of God. 
and start over. And sometimes it's hard. I guess my tired brain has a hard time focusing. Anyway, let's move on. I just wanted to say that to say we have to ask forgiveness. Okay, this one's called Amazing Polly Ties the Dots Together. Okay, so this is the channel Think About It. Now, he has some good stuff. Have you ever listened to Think About It? Um... I'm not subscribed to him. I'm wondering if they unsubscribed me or did he put up a video I didn't like. But I always thought this guy had good videos. All right. Under in his description box, it says, What if someone showed you the complete picture of why this COVID-19 even came about? Who wants this? The globalists. The New World Order, the Illuminati Luciferians. Okay, my personal message. I want all my donor box supporters to watch. Thank you, my supporters. And he's got a link here, so it's to something else. Hmm. Okay, there's a lot of links down here. His backup channels. Anyway, um, what the video is about? Now it's 23 minutes, so I sure can't remember it all. But he he ties this one woman that he introduces as the Amazing Polly ties the dots together. Who is this one woman? He's taking a walk showing you these very, very unusual clouds in here. Um, let me mute this just in case I hit something. All right. Okay, okay, hush. Um, let's see. I want to get to the story. I got to blow this up. Okay. He's trying to show you what all these people have in common. What are the ties? Okay. And then he shows a tweet. I still can't get over that. The president tweets. Um, did you hear about the one that he had taken down yesterday? <laughs> Supposedly it said all the protesters should be shot. Now that, that see that was taken down. So I can't. I can't prove that or not prove that. That's just what was in a video. All right. This says, COVID-19, ethical challenges for nurses. And it has some names here, and they're highlighted, which means they have a Twitter account. But they also included the name of Christine Grady, which is not highlighted. So she doesn't even have a Twitter account. So they're like, we discussed three major challenges from a nursing perspective, safety of self and others, and allocation of scarce resources and relationships. Okay, now you might think, well, that's something about nurses. That's not, nothing to do with me. Well, okay, you might want to back up now here. She starts talking about who is this Christine Grady and what does that have to do with us? She happens to be the chief of bioethics, the head of the section of human subjects research. Now, does anybody believe that it's all right to use human subjects to do research? Well, when they come out with a drug and the FDA is approves their... Um, that it's safe enough to try on humans. What they have to do is get a big group up, divide them in half, give half the real drug and half the placebo. That's using human subjects to test the drug, right? All right. So then she wanted to know, okay, who is this Christine Grady? Does she have any relations to what's going on with the COVID? 
Anyway, long story short, she boils it down that this Christine Grady uh, had written books about searching for an AIDS vaccine. As far as I know, there's never been one. Um, I'm moving fast forward through here. It turns out she's sisters to Joanne Husky. Joanne's husband, Jim, was the second secretary at the embassy in Nairobi at the time of, remember the embassy bombing that Hillary told the, the military to stand down and a bunch of our, our guys got killed. Well, this woman says, this woman, who is sisters to the first lady I spoke of, that's head of the human, using humans for experimenting on, all right, her name's Joanne Husky, she drove into the embassy, got out, got inside, got downstairs, trying to, supposedly to get her children vaccinated for school and the bomb went off. When she got outside, her car, her vehicle, was like a black, uh, like the bomb had been in her car. It wasn't that strange. Did someone just walk up and put a bomb in her vehicle and run away? Anyway, it leaves a question as to is did was she involved she and her husband James L Husky her husband Jim was the sec secretary at the embassy in Nairobi at the time he was also in Tiananmen Square China during the massacre so I don't know how many were killed I just know many were So this this lady, the amazing Polly, uh, I'm trying to find out if there's anything else. Um, it's just chock full of who's related to who, and it turns out, guess what? This Christine Grady is married to none other than Tony Fauci. Does that surprise anybody? These people are all interconnected. Christine Grady is married to Anthony Fauci. It's no wonder they keep their own names, isn't it? All right. Well, it's just it's just very interesting the parts that this one's married to this one and this one did this one and then and ties them into Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and it's like well you know what does that all have to do with us really all this information is just telling me these are the plans of the Illuminati right the New World Order they're just telling their plans and he's revealing some of the people that are interconnected. It's not such a large circle, is it? It's a pretty small, tight-knit group up there at the top. It always is. They don't want to spread their news and their money far and wide. What it tells me, this was put out May 29th, what this tells me is that Jesus Christ is that much closer to the door because all the things they have planned now why is the president missing and why are they actually saying the president is missing if anybody can put in the comment section what you've heard about that with a link I'd like to you know I could do more research but some of you've already seen it 
In fact, it might be in my email and I haven't gotten to it yet. Um, I, I have a lot of emails to finish going through and so I would like to do that instead of doing more research on this one subject. If you're ready to go, you're ready to go. To me, none of this worries me. There was talk about uh, chi Chinese and war. Well, I think the war that the um, Bible speaks of, I'm beginning to think, is most likely going to be civil war, but it, I mean, I don't know. I can't see war breaking out before. I've, I'm just finding it really hard to believe that any of the seals can be done out of order. You know? This plague was not, not a plague of the wrath of God. It wasn't even a plague. It was a lie. I mean, it was... People did die from COVID. It was a organism of some kind that was spread to other people. It did come from China, but started in North Carolina. I mean, it's all out there. You Anybody can research it. I'm not saying that Nobody got COVID and nobody died from it. I'm saying that they elevated the numbers and now they're admitting it. The CDC came out with a report giving way fewer numbers of deaths than they originally said would happen. They're admitting it. You know why? Because people are finding out that their mother who died of a head injury had COVID-19 on her death certificate. And they're like, you didn't let me go visit her because of COVID-19 when she fell and hit her head and I could have seen her before she died. Now, don't you know there's a lot of that going on and people are mad about it. I would be. I was mad that I couldn't be with my dog when he got put down and he was just a dog. Imagine your mother hitting her head and you can't even go in the hospital to visit her because she's got COVID. She was exposed to COVID. We can't let you be in there. And then she dies. And you didn't get to see her. I don't even know what more to say. But anyway, this is it's a very interesting video if you're interested in these kinds of facts of who's who's running the show and who's related to who. The stuff you sure surely won't hear on the television, the tell lie vision or television, however you want to look at it. Anyway, I'm gonna end this here. I plead the blood of Jesus over myself, my computer, my internet connection, and over each and every one of you, your devices, and your internet connections. And with that, I'm going to say bye for now. I will show you my chair. I will try. I think I can get it in there. It's hard with the sun. Yeah, there it is, right there. My puppy dog's in the way, and so are my feet. That is my chair. Yep. You wouldn't believe all the freebies I have here <laughs> that I've redone, recovered, read this, read that. <laughs> anyway, bye for now, everybody. Have a blessed Saturday night, and I will talk to you later.